Well, hello everyone and thank you for joining us again for another episode of Leading on Mondays. My name is Flori Lungo and I'm so delighted to be with you today. And today I'm joined by my teaching partner, Madalina Ginescu. Welcome, Madalina. Hey, Florin. Hello, everybody. Again, like always, I'm very happy to be here with you. Absolutely. And today we're going to talk about something which is, uh, you know, maybe we will not make the link between self-discipline and leadership. But we have found, and uh, our experience has been, that they are very, very much related. So uh, let's talk about why we need to be disciplined as leaders, if we want to become a leader or if we already are a leader, and how that uh, plays a role in leadership. So first of all, maybe, Madalina, what does self-discipline mean to you? For me, self-discipline means setting a goal then finding out what you need to do to achieve that goal and then daily do some steps to achieve that goal. This is self-discipline and the key word here is daily. All right. All right. Okay. So it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot yeah. of sense. And, and, you know, our mentor and business associate, John Maxwell, says that um, one of the toughest person to lead is ourselves. And, and for me, when I think about self-discipline, it's a, it's about getting a handle on myself before trying to lead others or, or to influence others. Because if I'm not disciplined, uh, well, leadership, I think there is a misconception in, in, in the marketplace and, and among many people that leadership is about kind of, you know, it's a fun it's a fun part. You give instructions to other people, you kind of empower people, you speak with them. But it has a lot of structure. When when I was leading my team and my project team, there was a lot of structure. So it, you have to be disciplined as leader to really kind of keep that structure in place. And I think self-discipline is a key, key skill, a, a key characteristic of a leader. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. And now that you said that, I actually think about teams. So leaders has teams usually. Mm -hmm. And they have a goal to achieve. And uh, guess what? They need to do uh, single steps every single moment so they can achieve that goal. Because if they wait until uh, one month before the deadline <laughs> and they didn't do anything before that, that might be a problem because uh, you won't have enough time to finish the job on time. So, like you said, it's a, it's a discipline to actually going to uh, achieve the goal. And you need to control yourself first, because if you don't do that, then how can you actually ask other people to do the same thing? Or how can you ask the same thing from other people if you don't, if you don't uh, push yourself uh, and acting upon the goal daily? Absolutely. So for someone that would want to be, become a leader, right, what would you tell to them? Like, if you want to become a leader, why is this self-discipline important to you? First of all, to for anybody who is not yet a leader and they want to become a leader in the future, they need to understand that they need to already have the self-discipline developed by the time they get the leading role. So for this, uh, when let's say when you don't have uh, a, a, a project with your team because you don't have a team to lead, then you need to create small projects upon your daily life. For example, I last year in August, I set my, uh, myself a goal to learn uh, and to practice every single day the Portuguese language. I'm using the application wow. Duolingo. And uh, guess what? Now I'm checking my, let's say, let's see exactly what number of days I'm in. So you would say that I'm uh, more than 366 days. But in my application, it says I have 243 days of uh, learning Portuguese. And I would ask you, why do you think I only have 243 days instead of more than 366? Well, did you skip some days, maybe? <laughs> yes, at some point when I had, I think, 93 days already, so daily, I, I had the practice daily. Mm -hmm. Somehow, two, two, two days in a row, I forgot to do my practice, my daily practice. There is a mini minimum of uh, exercise that I need to do on the mm -hmm. application to keep it rolling. 
So two days in a row, I forgot, I totally forgot how to do that. Uh, I totally forgot to do the exercise. And because of that, I lost all my progress uh, before that. And I had to start over from, from day number one. <laughs> so you can imagine that because, uh, because of that situation, I actually, I'm now one year later and I cannot uh, say that I made the progress of 366 days because I didn't follow uh, the routine daily. So I would advise any leader to, first of all, set a goal create small steps to do daily so they can actually do the the that activity wherever they are whenever they can like a small step easy step to do and then they can actually uh observe themselves and did i do my activity did today yes if not what is the case why, why didn't i do that activity today and there, there, this is not this is not finished because it's not enough just to okay just to think about why didn't I do the exercise today is actually finding out what were the excuses that you told yourself <laughs> oh it's, this is not important oh I can do twice as many tomorrow oh I can uh, compensate the, the activity I didn't do today uh, next week and so on and so forth so pay attention also related to the excuses that you're making when you're not you're not doing your daily discipline absolutely so what do yeah. you think about that Florin? yeah that, that's so good and, and it reminds me of um, something that I read in a book right now, and I want to read it to us because I didn't memorize it. it. It's something from a book called Take the Stairs, right? So when you have the choice to take the stairs or take the elevator, he says, take the stairs, right? And, and, and the yeah. author is Rory Vadden, and, and he takes an interesting approach when it comes to a, a decision that we need to um, make daily, like, in other words, am I going to pay the price right now and kind of play later? Or am I going to play now and pay the price later? Because that's kind mm -hmm. of the decision that we have. Is the instant gratification right now I, I want to maybe, oh, let me let me just, um, oh, let me have a coffee. That's, that's kind of what I tell my, oh, let me just have a coffee. And I go and have a coffee. And then that's, you know, 25 minutes later, I come back after scrolling social media. Oh, well, <laughs> where was I? What should I do? So many times we put the things that are, are important, we put them later and we want to play first and pay later, right? And he says something like that, that he calls it the pain paradox. And it says that the short term easy leads to long-term difficult, while the mm -hmm. short-term yeah. difficult leads to long-term easy. And he calls mm -hmm. this the paradox. And he says that what we thought was the easy way and what looks like the easy way and what seems to be the easy, easy way often leads to creating a life that couldn't be more far away from easy. And what mm -hmm. we thought was difficult and what we thought was one of the most rigorous uh, requirements for us to move forward many times creates that easy life that we try to, we, we seek actually. Yes. And what he says is, is that many times when we take a shortcut, when we take the easy way today, that will be uh, transformed into something difficult tomorrow. There is never mm -hmm. easy. And, and we know like also John Maxwell teaches that uh, everything worthwhile, it's, it's up, uphill, right? Uphill, if you want yes. to, right? If you, if you really want to become a leader, if you want to develop as, a, as an individual, that's an uphill battle. What he means by that, it means that we're not just going to do the things that we, we've done up until now. We're just going to run our lives on autopilot and we end up at the top of a mountain. You have yeah. to be very intentional to get there, right? Exactly. And, and, and in order for us to get there, we really need to be disciplined and do those daily things. And for me, it, trans, it, it translates into, you know, two or three things that are most important to me that, that I need to do daily. Like, for example, you know, because of the kind of business I'm in, 
I need to read every single day because unless I read and I, I learn new things, then I, it's, it's impossible for me to, to stay you know, up to the game and, and to stay mm -hmm. updated to what's going on on the market and to serve my clients in, in the best of ways, right? So for me, one thing is to read every single day. The other thing is to, I, I call that, I don't call it writing because I'm not writing, I'm not an author, but I'm, I'm, I'm taking notes, I'm creating content, right? Anytime I read something that connects to something that I know it's important to me and my clients, I write it down. So mm -hmm. I take notes every single day, which creates content because we live in this era where, you know, TV is actually social media and we are now live here on LinkedIn, right? And, and on yes. YouTube. And, and this is where, you know, I need to be and I need to be present. So for me, reading, creating content, and, and these are at least the two things that I do every single day. And then one that I should get back to is to do my daily exercise and my daily routine, because that's mm -hmm. um, another part of, of my life, which is important. If I'm not healthy, if I don't feel good, if I don't feel well, I'm not able to serve my clients. I'm not able to add value to other people. So when you think about self-discipline, it's paying the, the price now and playing later rather than, um, you know, just going after that instant gratification and take mm -hmm. the the cookie before and then exercise later. This uh, reminds me that uh, of a small uh, uh, quote from a guy from uh, from auto discipline in um, Twenty One Qualities of a Leader, mm -hmm. and he says uh, that when he had some uh, training, this is a story. When they had the training, that the coach ask them to climb up and down a hill 20 times, which is a, a hill a high as, of 36 meters. And 20 mm -hmm. times a day, they had to climb up and down that, to run actually, to run on, uh, on that hill. And in one hot, dry day, Rice, this is the guy that I'm talking about, he was ready to give up after 11, after the 11th lap. While he was going to the lockers, he realized that well, he realized what he did, what he did, and a voice in his head said, "Don't give up, because once you give up, then you find giving up as a normal thing to do." Wow! Oh. And then he turned back and continued his running, and then he never, uh, from from that moment on, he never uh, gave up at all. On anything so just remember that what you're, you're you're doing actually after you're quitting something then you create this habit of giving up it's natural and normal and it's not like you said it's a it's a instant gratification instead of you actually being able to um to to be happy later or to achieve what you really want because what you really want is up there on the hill and it's not there in the <laughs> just in front of you because if it, if it would be right there in front of you it's not a worthwhile activity or a worthwhile goal so what would you advise Florin leaders who let's say who observe themselves as lacking a little bit on the self discipline or maybe they don't have self discipline at all at all what should they do to actually increase this quality and develop it? Yeah, for me, I think there are five steps here, right? So mm -hmm. it starts with starting where you are at. Whatever you are, find something small that you can build a muscle. Like I have a story that I want to share with you. Uh, this is 2018. In 2018, I had um, a back pain. I was sitting in front of a computer for many hours and I developed a hunch position. I was like more or less like that. And I had this back pain. So I went to see a chiropractor and he advised me, okay, Florian, you have some muscles here that are blocked. So he, he did his procedure and then he asked me, do you do any kind of exercise? And at that moment, I didn't do anything. And I said, well, you know, Timo is his name. You know, Timo, well, I'm I'm busy, you know. I'm I, I don't have time for exercise. And and he asked yeah. me, well, but Florian, you could start with some push-ups in the morning. It's something very simple. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, my morning routine is very strict. You know, I do that. So, well, how many push-ups would you be able to do if you start now? 
and I was really out of shape. And I said, well, I don't know, maybe five or 10. And he asked me, you know, how long does it take you to do those five push-ups? And I realized I was just making myself an excuse because it will only take me maybe one minute or 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't you have 30 seconds? And so then from that moment on, I said, well, okay, I'm going to start with 10 push-ups every single morning. And I started with 10 push-ups. And then after one month, I went up to 15. And then uh-huh. three months later, I was to 20. And at a point, probably one year later, I was doing 50 every morning. Uh-huh. Now, I don't do those anymore because I found an excuse this summer not to do them. And I kind of break the habit. But what I'm saying is that it started very, very small. So when I say yes. start wherever you are, start with a small goal that you know you can achieve to build that muscle, to prove to yourself that you can be disciplined because that's the biggest challenge. We see ourselves not being disciplined and then we don't even try. So in order mm-hmm. to build exactly. muscle, the muscle, start with something small. When, when, when I started reading, you know, I, I was reading at night and I could probably read one page and then fall asleep. But that was enough because I read one page every single evening and that would be at least 365 pages a year, right? yeah. much more than zero pages a year. <laughs> so, so then I started with something very, very small. So that's my first my first advice would be start with something small, wherever you are, find something that is small. It's a quick win, something that you can you could put some wins under your belt and build some, some confidence that you can actually do that. And you are disciplined. Exactly, and, yeah. The second one would be to avoid temptations, right? So in order for us to be able to stay disciplined, if you think about the area of uh, health and, 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 you know, body, uh, think about eating. Like for me, um, the decision to, for what I eat is made at the supermarket, not at home. Like if I know I cannot... If I if I know I, I cannot trust myself, I don't bring home things that I know hurt me, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I see what you mean. <laughs> That's if a good you, one. If you want to to stop smoking, don't go out with people that smoke. If you want to stop yeah. drinking, don't go out with people that drink, right? So don't put yourself in that situation where you're gonna put away the things that that you want to. That's why. When I was successful at doing my exercise routine, it was the first thing I was doing in the morning because, you know, there is a there is a law of diminishing returns. They say the longer you wait to do something that you know you should be doing now, the greater the odds that you're never going to do it. So that's why we, if we put this first in the morning, right, then then it helps us to to do it. So start right where you are. Avoid temptations. Pay now, play later. We just discussed mm-hmm. about delaying gratification, right? Ma- doing the exercise before and, and then maybe having the cake after if you still want to have the cake. Because, well, if, you, if you've done the exercise, then you say, well, why should I ruin what I just gained by having the cake now? Or, or in other words, find a, a, a little reward that you assign to something. So if I finish writing this, piece of content, then I'm going to go have a coffee and, and a biscuit or whatever yeah. you want to have, right? Yeah. That's yeah. kind of, or, or I'll buy the new camera for my studio after I get this new client, not before yeah. getting the client, right? But yes. That's, mm-hmm, delay gratification, right? Let's do the work now and let's get the reward after. But today we live in a world where we have most, most of the things we want, you know, one, one by click on Amazon, which is instant gratification. That's why it's so difficult for us to actually um, delay gratification. The number four is to get back up, right? So you, you mentioned that at day 90 something, you, you slipped a few days from your Portuguese exercise, yes. but then you didn't say, you didn't say, well, okay, I'm not good at, at, at Portuguese. I'm not, I'm not going to learn it. So I'm just quitting. No, you got back on, right? You yes. missed some days, but you, you, you started back. Same with me, right? I had a period where I didn't exercise, but now I'm back on it because we all fail. And instead of us just uh, just 
using that as, as, as a criticism for ourselves and, and beating ourselves up yes. because we didn't do it, then we say, well, okay, um, focus on today. I cannot change yesterday. Mm -hmm. I didn't exercise yesterday. Okay. But what I can do is exercise today. And, and the, the, the fifth one would be what has helped me by, by the story I just shared with you with Timo and, and in another situation is having an accountability partner, right? This is where yes. a great coach actually, it, it's a tremendous help because it holds you accountable for the things you, you said you want to do. And for me, it has been either people from outside of me. Timo was my chiropractor. I was accountable to him for my exercise. I have my coaches that I work with right now. And when I know that I'm not, I cannot trust myself to do some things and I'm not disciplined, then I'm going to share that with them and ask them to hold me accountable. Because for me, yeah. I, I, you know, I'm more accountable in front of you if I promise you that I'm going to be here at this time or I'm going to deliver something. That's why we're here every single morning, every single Monday, Monday. because we promise and we're here and you, the viewers, you hold us accountable to be here. If you wouldn't be live, then well, we could we could do it, you know, here and there or whenever we want, and and so this is what has helped. It's not a routine, yeah. Exactly. I would uh, uh, I would add one more thing to the self discipline part. When uh, now I'm thinking, why didn't I give up on learning Portuguese? Because I don't have uh, where to practice it. I just learn it uh, from the application. I just watched a few movies on, in Portuguese, and that's the only thing that I had uh, as practice. Why didn't I give up on Portuguese after one year? And I realized that I have a competition in my blood. And I realized that after the first 93 days, when I saw back to number one, back to number two, back to number three day, um, I felt bad because I gave up. Uh, I just totally missed two days and I didn't see the big progress that I made. So now every single time I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the application instead of me seeing of 300 whatever, how many days, I see only 200 however many days. <laughs> So it's a shame that I actually missed the progress that I did. So it's the same thing that is happening in self-discipline. We need to be aware that self-discipline is uh, gone when we give up on that practice for good. So if you want to, to do some exercise, physical exercises, and you do them for a while, and then you give up on them and you don't do it, them at all, that is where you're lacking the self and you are actually don't prove at all the self-discipline. But if you're doing exercises and then you stop for, for a bit, for one day, for one week, for maybe one month, but then you get back on the, on the horse, as you mentioned before, that means that you are, you are on the way to develop your, your self-discipline. So you need to to be okay with you that you missed one day, you missed one week, you missed one month. But remember, you need to get back on it. This is how you actually, uh, this is how you actually develop your self-discipline. If you're getting back on it. And another secret with this self-discipline is, as you mentioned, to, to have some activities that, that you can do every single day. Even when you're sick, even when it's your birthday, even when it's uh, the New Year's Eve, uh, even when it's Christmas, even when it's Easter. So just like just like uh, Maxwell said, I really like this and it's very funny because he's saying that I have a small routine. I'm doing this daily, my five activities that uh, keeps me from uh, being a very good at what I do. I read, I write, I file. I think and I ask questions. This is what he does every single day. And somebody in the audience asked him, what do you mean by every single day? <laughs> he, he was looking at him every single day. And guess what? The next question was, even when, you're birth, when, you, when you have your birthday, you know, even when on your birthday, yes, every single day. Even on Christmas? Yes, every single day. Even on Easter? Yes, every single day. Even when you're sick? 
Yes, every single day. <laughs> so make sure that you have an activity that you can also do when you're sick and all the other days that I mentioned before. Yeah. Just remember, this is the key, uh, a key to to control your self discipline. Uh, absolutely, and I think that's where it gets back to kind of knowing what it's important for us, right? So, in one of the next episodes, we're going to talk about priorities because um, you know, for each of us and our role and where we are, there are some things that are important, and and those will be our you know daily activities, right? that John Maxwell has mentioned. So, so as I said, for me, it's at least reading and, and filing some, some thoughts, taking notes and exercising. And, and it's each of us to decide what are those two or three things that are more imp most important to us that give us the, the most uh, return on investment if we do them daily. And let's practice those and build the, the self-discipline muscle there. I think you're muted. Can you hear me now? Yep. There is one more thing that I really found in the coaching process. It's mm -hmm. the, juggle, the juggle exercise, if you remember. So how, how a juggler learns how to juggle with, with three or more balls at the same time. So the, the secret here is that he first uh, learns how to juggle with one ball at the time and then when it gets very good with one ball then it adds the second ball to actually learn how to jog with the second one and when it gets good at uh, the juggling with two balls at the same time then it adds an additional one and so on and so forth and this is uh, one very very good practice that I'm doing for the self-discipline if I want to be successful in my self-discipline I don't try to make as many changes as I I, as I want during the day. So I'm not going to be self-disciplined in all the areas of my life, like health, uh, business, uh, I don't know, reading, jogging and whatever. So I'm just trying to get good at self-discipline with one thing. And then when I already created the routine and I cannot give it up because it's in my blood, then I add the second routine and then it's easier for me to keep keep the ball rolling instead of me give, giving up of, on on my own whole self-discipline because it's too much for me to do during the day. So it's another secret that people should do. Absolutely. That's <laughs> so good. And it reminds me of a, of a quote by, by a guy, Mike Kim, uh, he, he's the marketing and, and uh, copywriting business. And he says that success is sequential, not simultaneous. In other words, he mm -hmm. started with first blogging, then he added podcasting, then he added a live event, and then he added. So exactly as you say, you don't start with five goals in each of your important areas of your lives. And then you try to do them, you know, from zero to 100, like in three days. Yeah. At all. You start with one goal and you add another one and you add another one. So it's sequential, not simultaneous. Yes, yes. So this is a secret that anybody should learn and should know. And guess what? Apply. And uh, we are very happy to hear how you applied this self-discipline in your life. Or if you applied it and it didn't work, what did you do? What were your mistakes? Uh, were your excuses sorry what were your excuses not to continue your self-discipline and um next time florin we will talk about personal growth absolutely yeah next time we're going to talk about personal growth and why is personal growth important to leadership especially to leading ourselves well and, and self self-leadership i'm i'm looking forward to hear us next time to bring us to you to bring to you more uh, more ideas about self discipline about sorry self growth personal growth in leadership and of course to uh, share with you our stories of how we apply this in our lives absolutely looking forward so see you all next monday bye everybody take care bye bye <laughs>